your life. Okay? Very good. Welcome, everyone. Today is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. The time is uh, 4.04. We are here for our Board of Davis County Commissioners public meeting in Farmington, Utah at the Davis County Administration Building, 61 South Main Street, Suite 303. And we still have a lot of uh, things that are a little bit different during the pandemic. No more than 20 are in the room, but we're just really excited. We do have some additional people in the room today. And all three commissioners are here. We're spaced out on the dais. Uh, Bob Stevenson, commissioner to my right, and Randy Elliott, commissioner to my left. In our audience, we do have our civil attorney, Neil Geddes, and also our elected clerk auditor, Curtis Koch. Thanks to our sheriff for being here, emergency manager, Chad Monroe, Sulika from Tax Admin, who's new, so fun to have you, Sulika. And also we have Nicole Baxter from Davis Behavioral Health as a guest today. So thank you all. We will start with our, oh, and we have still the ability for people to come in person for public comment related to the agenda or to call or email in comments by 3 p.m. the day of the meeting. And I don't believe we received any comment from the public pertinent to today's agenda. We will start with our opening Pledge of Allegiance, and we have asked Chad Monroe, if he would stand and get us started in that. And you can do it from there, Chad. That's okay. Just speak loudly. Everyone, please rise. Face our colors. Ready to begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have some wonderful items today in our recognitions, presentations, and informational items at the start of the meeting. The first one is a reading of the request for proposal responses for professional auditing services, and I believe Curtis will give us some information. Yes, Commissioners, you have, uh, uh, today uh, we've opened our RFP for our external audit. Uh, we have four, excuse me, five uh, groups that have replied, and they will be referred to the Audit Committee for selection of the next uh, external auditor of Davis County. Uh, the first is Carver, Florek, and James CPAs, Litz and Company, uh, Christensen, Palmer, and Ambrose, Ulrich and Associates, and All About IT, Inc. And so those will be the RFPs that uh, at this point are responsive and they'll be reviewed by the Audit Committee and then you'll be able to take action on uh, who the next uh, external auditor is for Davis County. Fantastic. Thanks to all of you down there helping us to get that done. Okay, the next really important item today, um, a week ago today, was the 2020 windstorm. <laughs> the third emergency of this year, <laughs> 2020. And we thought it would be really helpful if our emergency manager, Chad Monroe, who has been working tremendously since the end of February for our county during all of these extraordinary times, if he would please give us an update specific to the windstorm for our public to be aware of. And Chad, you're surely welcome to come up here. And You've been sharing updates uh, every single day uh, since the even the day before the windstorm, and we just appreciate all your work and just share kind of what you think is helpful for the county to know, I mean the public in our county to know. Sure, absolutely. So um, right away we knew the windstorm was going to be a major deal with what we were getting from the National Weather Service, which we were monitoring and staying in touch with. Um, luckily, or fortunately for us and our citizens, it, it wasn't our first rodeo for for Commissioner Elliott's uh, hat there. It wasn't our first rodeo, but um, 
Anyway, some of the cities were very well prepared. Uh, they have a lot of volunteer groups. They've done a lot of preparation. They've been through it before. Um, I think our biggest asset in the county through this has been our citizens. Um, I, I can't say enough. I just think the world is full of a lot of noise right now, and the noise coming out of Davis County is that we're, we're unified, we're kind, we're helpful, and, and we want to get back to, to helping each other. And this has given us the opportunity to do that. Um, when the storms hit Monday, Tuesday nights, uh, we ended up as a county declaring a, a, a declaration of emergency, which allowed us to, to reach out to the state and ask for some assistance. Uh, the state mobilized the National Guard for us um, very quickly. Uh, they also mobilized uh, Utah Department of Transportation for us very quickly. So I would say over the last four to five days, we've had somewhere between 200 and 250 troops on the ground in Davis County helping. Uh, we've had large equipment uh, spread over a number of cities helping. Uh, we've, all, we've also had UDOT trucks and equipment and personnel in upwards of 40 dump trucks in our county helping to, to move stuff around. Um, our county took it harder in the southern end of the county from probably Kaysville South, South Weaver. Uh, they're used to wind, but they took, they took a, a bit of damage and they've done a very good job of helping out and uh, getting things rolling there. Layton is doing a good job of, of uh, managing what's happening. Every city is doing a good job of managing what's happening. Um, their city emergency managers have been tremendous, uh, all of them, whether they were brand new or whether they were, had done this before, they're all working together well. Um, they all had established plans so that when the National Guard got here and when UDOT got here and when the other cities from our county sent resources to help those that were harder hit, they were ready for them and they were able to deploy them right away. We haven't had a lot of standing around. We haven't had a lot of idle time. These guys have really been working hard. Um, National Guard and UDOT are starting to leave our county now and go to Salt Lake and, and other places to help, but we still have some compliments of them in, in the county. Um, if I could just mention that some of the things that would be great at this point is we're getting into the point where our resources, our assistance is leaving. And so as a county, we're going to have to stick together and our citizens are, have been, uh, have been great during this. And we're asking them to, to take their stuff to the landfills, use your trash cans. Um, we're not going to have the resources to drive every single street in the county, uh, and, and clean things up. Well, we don't have the manpower. We don't have the resources. So we're asking for the public just to continue doing what they're doing because it's working. Um, this, we came out of this on Wednesday and today's Tuesday and we're in, we're in really good shape. I think we're doing extremely well. Um, with that, uh, I'm yeah, any other any questions? comments or, or questions? I know from the commission perspective, um, you, we're proactive, as well as others working with you in the Emergency Operations Center. You activated that more completely. I think you said that you had a, a couple of generals who also came and were very complimentary and, of course, very involved. It was a really big deal that we were, um, we were prepared and we understand windstorms and that people could get busy right away to enhance the efforts of the citizens that had started right off. Yes. Yeah. We were able to really augment the, the operation that was going. And uh, there's, a, there's a few places that really deserve a lot of gratitude from us. And uh, obviously the state and their assistance from the governor down to the, the National Guard, to uh, Utah Department of Transportation, they've been tremendous. Uh, our landfills, Davis, our uh, Wasatch Integrated and Bountiful, They've been working around the clock to field everything coming in. And if you've driven around, you've seen these debris piles, you've seen the devastation, and they're, they're the ones handling it all coming in. Right. And they're doing a tremendous job. Uh, the county, every single city, I, I, I can't say enough. The volunteer groups, the citizens, we've had citizens open their businesses at night, late at night to help the National Guard uh, sharpen or repair chainsaw blades so that they can get right back out there. We've had citizens, you know, thinking, you know, the reports coming in are tremendous, and everybody's just doing a really great job. 
I know you said some cities that were less impacted were sending resources to the cities that were more impacted. Yes, but don't what cut, collaboration. cut yourself short because this is a text from Farmington City. But on a separate note, Chad Monroe and all your excavators are amazing. Jeremy and Bob spent 16 hours a day sitting on those loaders, and Chad's been you know, directing their, their people right and left and everything else, getting the resources even outside of the county, I mean, outside of the cities in Farmington. So, Chad, thank you for your help on this, too. And, and uh, it's recognized you know, to the sheriff. I know he's off his probation now, so we can keep him and he can't get fired for a while. So uh, we thank you, Chad, for your work that you've been doing in this year of, you know, unprecedented year. So. Chad, lucky. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I would, I, the, the credit belongs to a lot of other places and people, believe me, so. Yeah, we, we are tremendously grateful to you and to all who have worked with you. And, and we completely agree that Many, many thanks to many agencies and cities and citizens and others who have all stepped up. Um, we want to be able to express appreciation in the very best way that we can. So we'll continue to try to do that with you. And thank you. I don't know that there's anything else. Well, I, I just think one thing that needs to be pointed out, and Chad, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think statewide there was only one fatality through uh, all the storm that took place, and if you take a look at the, all the things that were falling from above on on their way down, that we were fortunate to only have, you know, one fatality. I think you know, also speaks highly of of people helping each other out and trying to be there. Uh, I think we need to realize that not only with the power off and the, the different things as far as that went. You know, these are things, power lines, light power lines now, which we did have those down, I think, in different areas that, you know, again, this was something that uh, was able to be corrected, and, you know, there just wasn't a loss of life in this this whole situation, so. And I think what you said is right on, sir, from based on what I understand from this, and uh, I, I think it, I think we're, we're full of a lot of good people, and, uh, we're just asking people to just continue to be kind, be patient, lend a hand, um, and everyone's doing the best they can. So. so one of the things I think that actually, and Randy alluded to a little bit dealing with, with Wasatch Integrated is that, not that you want to set records, but just to show your capability, uh, as Nathan Rich, the director up there, pointed out that back in 2011, I think, uh, the highest they took in one day, I think, was 24, 2500. Uh, vehicles as far as unloading and I remember that because the lines how they were back on 193 uh, you know this year they've been able to accomplish that uh, 400 or 500 more loads and really we never had lines anywhere near what, what took place a few years ago so you know we've become better at what we do yes and they're to, like I said before sir they're to be commended there I've worked with Nathan several times here uh, just since I've been here during this and he's been tremendous extremely helpful They've really streamlined their process to get either the citizens in or the National Guard or the city dump trucks or the UDOT trucks. Same thing with Bountiful. Both of them have just been a revolving door all day long, all day long. And their, their people are, are burning the candle at both ends. They've both been tremendous. Yeah, I like the way in the, um, the press release that went out September 14th from Liz Solace to the community. Um, what a great... An important focus that the um, it was public safety, public safety, and an infrastructure focus. And I um, my eye skipped over it. Right. I'll yeah. add to that, Commissioner, a little bit. At the very beginning, the priorities were obviously our our it was public safety, clearing access points, roadways, eliminating hazards, and focusing on the infrastructure of our city to make sure they can keep on running. And we could get the resources in where we needed to and out when we needed to um, and to make sure they could keep on running. So that's how that's how we prioritize the resources that were, were coming in um, when we had a lot coming in at one time. Yeah, the hazards was yes. what I was looking for. Yes, the, well done with the prioritizing. It has worked as well as it can possibly work from everything we've seen and heard. Thank you very much and thank you for coming to share also uh, the update. Our next presentation, I'm going to switch the order here and ask um, for Nicole Baxter to come up from Davis Behavioral Health. She will give us some information. We've been focusing also 
in September um, on the fact that uh, September is National Suicide Prevention Month. So thank you for coming, Nicole. And anything you'd like to share to help our public understand prevention would be really great. Thank you so much, Commissioners and Davis County Public. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share about some of the great events and resources happening here in our county and the state. Um, so we are about halfway through National Suicide Prevention Month. So there, are, there have been some wonderful things that have happened up to this point, and there are still a few events for the public to attend. The North Davis Communities That Care Coalition is partnering with UTA to hold a suicide prevention resource fair, and that's going to be at the Clearfield stop on this coming Monday, September 21st from 3 to 6 p.m. So riders will receive information as they're boarding and exiting the trains there, um, a lot of helpful prevention resources. And also coming up this week, Sunday through Saturday, so September 20th through the 26th, is the New Hope and Intermountain Healthcare Hope Week. Uh, they traditionally have done a Hope Walk in person and obviously for COVID precautions, that is gonna be moving to a virtual walk on Saturday the 26th. They also have a couple trainings happening that are gonna be virtual as well. There's one called the Working Minds Training and that is gonna be Tuesday, September 22nd from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And Working Minds, it's really set at training organizations to be proactive in addressing suicide prevention, early warning signs within, early warning signs for suicide within the workplace. And uh, they just like the organizations have realized how they can help reduce heart disease by encouraging exercise. They can also reduce suicide by promoting mental health and encouraging early identification and intervention. So Working Minds is an excellent training. And then also there is the virtual QPR training, which stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer, and that is going to be on Tuesday, September 22nd as well from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, QPR is in an essence like CPR. We just want to train up people to be able to um, identify warning signs for suicide and know how to respond, um, and just like with CPR, you don't have to be a medical professional to do that, but we all can do something when someone is in a life-threatening situation in that sense, and also in terms of suicide prevention and helping someone get to a mental health professional. And in recent years, those QPR trainings have been taking place in the community, if I understand. I've correct. I've been to one. I've heard it. It was brought to where, where I was. Yes. Yeah, I, I attended one myself here um, at the Bountiful um, Police station there so yeah there are QPR trainings that happen throughout the year so pretty excited to see that in conjunction with Hope Week this next week and Working Minds is something that we're just starting to bring to the county this year also uh, we had a, um, I think our first training for the area was just this past week and another event coming up is from the Utah Department of Health, and it's gonna be next Friday, September 25th from 10 to 11 a.m. It's a safe messaging training. So it's really, um, its purpose is to help us understand the importance of safe messaging. So how we talk about suicide is extremely important. Um, and it can either promote hope and healing or it can increase risk. So um, this is an excellent training, again, just to be be cautious and be um, accurate in how we talk about suicide so that it can reduce risk there. But I, I have heard, tell me if this is accurate, but that it, um, it helps to have safe ways to talk about it rather than to never talk about it, right? In fact, yes. It's preventive yes. To, to, to bring it up in the appropriate way. Right, yeah, there, there's a myth that when we talk about suicide, it increases suicide, and that's not the case, that's not true. So the safe messaging training is a great way to build confidence in knowing how to talk about it in appropriate ways. And then in October, October 9th, my last event share for now, the Utah Valley University, um, they have a conference on suicide prevention. It'll also be virtual. So Friday, October 9th, it's an all-day type thing, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, it's designed to meet the needs and interests of professionals, service providers, families, community members, and students. And there is a general registration fee of $65 for this one, and for students it's free. And you can earn up to six CEUs and one ethics credit from NASW if you need that as well. 
So I have some handouts. I have 10, everybody can get one. <laughs> um, and on the second page, there are just some ongoing resources. Um, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can never be overstated. That's a 24 seven free confidential support line. Um, and it's 1-800-273-TALK, which is 8255. So. Fantastic. If you want to put them on a chair over here, then we'll be able to get them as we leave. And that's very helpful. Any, so any questions? I, I, read some, I read something uh, last couple of days or something that actually during this COVID period, suicides have been, the rate has been lower in uh, northern Utah. Do you know anything on that? I can't speak to that directly. Um, I, I know that there is concern that we might see an influx, um, a, a wave of you know mental health concerns and suicide suicidality um, once people don't have so many you know delays in their bills and all those aids. Um, so that's something we're being we're we're watching closely. Yeah. All right, very good. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you, I appreciate it. We really appreciate you coming and sharing again for the month. And then our final item in this first part of the agenda is some other good news. Uh, the Municipal Building Authority's bond, the closing, we have an update from Curtis Koch, our elected clerk auditor. Great news, it's been hard for me to wait for this because I've known about it for a while. Uh, commissioners, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is good news. Uh, we recently closed on the Municipal Building Authority's uh, refinance of this admin building, as well as uh, adding uh, an additional seven million dollars of debt service uh, for the Memorial Courthouse renovation. In doing so, uh, refunding the the original bonds for this building was just I want to say about nineteen point six million dollars. Uh, and by refunding at these historically low rates, and at this point in time, um, we uh, have been able to recognize the net present value savings of $2.6 million over the life of, uh, or the remaining life of those bonds. Uh, historically, or the conventional wisdom, uh, historically has been that you do a refunding when you can receive uh, 3% net present value uh, savings. Uh, these bonds netted 16, uh, over 16% 16 savings. And so that uh, uh, last year I was thinking, I wish we could re refund uh, the set of bonds last year, uh, but uh, the constraints of the existing bonds didn't allow that. So uh, it is a little bit of a timing uh, game and we are grateful to uh, have been able to capitalize on such low interest rates. Uh, any questions that you have? You know, it's just it's just fantastic <laughs> when we have saved over two point six million dollars of taxpayer money. That is a really big deal. And Curtis, your team, and Heidi Bordekers, and the effort from the finance people in our county, and our partners who have helped us with, get this done. Uh, it's, boy, it went really smoothly, and, and what an outcome. Absolutely, so to, to give you an idea, the, the true interest cost, so the true interest cost wraps in all the fees and everything uh, that would be associated with this, and also the uh, coupons that we receive. Uh, the true interest cost for this uh, transaction, it's a 20-year transaction, and it's 1.5887804%. So that's uh, that's pretty cheap money right now. Uh, Amazing. Anyway, so. Great news, and thank you so much for sharing that today. All right. <clears throat> we'll move on to all of our business and action items now. Do we have any the... Oh, sorry, public comments. Oh, the reading RFP responses. Yeah. yeah, we'll do public comments first, just in general. If there is anyone here to speak to uh, the commissioners in a three-minute public comment, you're welcome to come forward now. Seeing none, then we'll have Curtis come back up. He will present the resolution to adopt 
additional 2020 budget appropriation requests. These are requests um, funded by new revenues and monies unspent from the prior years. After he presents, we will open a public hearing. Commissioners, you have for your consideration uh, during this historic year uh, another historic consideration. Um, uh, this uh, primarily you will see in this resolution uh, CARES funds for tranche two that is being uh, provided through uh, the federal government to the state and then redirected from the state to the county. And so in fund 10, in non-departmental, you uh, see revenue increase by $8,982,621. Uh, offsetting expenses related to that are in programs. Uh, $3,571,000 uh, directed uh, in uh, CARES spending uh, to Davis County School District uh, for a contribution. They've made a proposal and uh, we're waiting on paperwork to get that done uh, so that they can uh, utilize those funds to uh, ensure safe, uh, a safe and healthy uh, school system throughout the county. Uh, in our jail, uh, increased expense for payroll of $100,000 for janitorial uh, uh, work that needs to be done for cleaning. In particular, we've uh, lost a lot of our ability to use uh, some of our inmates uh, for cleaning and, and, and use, so there's $100,000 in payroll there. Uh, in community economic development, uh, in the first tranche that was issued, the county put $5 million towards a uh, community uh, business grant program. Uh, we had uh, several or multiple cities, I should say, not necessarily several, but we do have multiple cities help and contribute. Um, from tranche two, we are looking at taking 900,000 uh, to basically uh, complete that program. And uh, anybody that did apply would, would receive and qualified would receive funding. Uh, in the Sheriff's Department payroll, uh, we have uh, uh, $1 million. This is uh, this is a combination, and we talked about this in budget committee yesterday, but I'll uh, just uh, explain a little here. A uh, million dollars in payroll for the sheriff's admin building security and wages. That is not all just for security and wages at the admin building. We anticipate that uh, CARES dollars will allow us to take some uh, or use some of those funds to offset wages from personnel that have been substantially, uh, had jobs substantially changed. And so we anticipate some of our frontline sheriff's department, uh, that some of the, uh, some of those expenses will roll into that. Non-departmental uh, miscellaneous uh, cleaning supplies as we try and keep our facilities clean and safe for the public and our employees of $100,000 in animal care and control. Uh, we are, this one is related to fund balance. Uh, we had need for an emergency repair of their walk-in freezer of $8,300. So you see uh, expense being increased and we are using a non-departmental contingency of $8,300 uh, to offset that. In uh, non-departmental, we also are recommending after completing our 20 19 CAFR and audit. Uh, we had uh, significant unanticipated revenues of just over $2 million that came through legislative and, and state uh, contributions to the county. We also had significant turn back from uh, budgets not being expended. We would recommend that $5.2 million uh, of that almost $7 million be transferred into Fund 45 for capital reserve and uh, that will uh, help us uh, as we move into the 20, well, basically 2021 with a capital uh, building program and, and fund uh, so that needs of the county can be addressed moving forward rather than just holding that in our fund 10, uh, in our general fund, which is fund 10. In uh, Fund 15, once again, you can see $1.5 million from Tranche 2 CARES funds 
coming in in revenues. The offset of that is $500,000 for additional PPE stockpile as we prepare for 2020. Uh, and who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Uh, bad attitude. <laughs> It's been. It might be real estate, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Must be prepared. Um, I, I, I like to think it's being cautiously optimistic. I am, I am an optimist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, which is what our health department director tells us every week. I, I'm, a, I'm a, yes. We'll just move on and, and keep covering these dollars. Uh, there is $140,000 in payroll. Uh, Increase of expenses for uh, seniors, wages and benefits as we try and uh, meet the needs of the senior population through this pandemic. Uh, benefits increased by 50,000 for those same uh, seniors. Uh, computer equipment uh, increase of $30,000 as we try and staff, uh, provide those, those staffing serv uh, services. We also need uh, the equipment to support those, and so that's the thirty thousand dollars there in the health department. Uh, you see an increase in payroll for health department wages and benefits of three hundred ninety-eight thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, uh, an additional three hundred and twenty-six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in benefits. Uh, these are for uh, once again uh, health department staff and staffing up, trying to meet the demand that uh, COVID has placed upon uh, our health department. Computer equipment to support those staff, uh, $50,000. $55,000. Or excuse me, yes, $55,000. Thank you. Um, we also have in our health uh, department, uh, this is coming from fund balance, uh, fund 46. Uh, we budgeted to uh, install a backup generator in our health department uh, in the 2020 budget. Uh, our health department does not have a backup generator, so we'll power those out. It goes dark. Uh, that's a really bad thing when, because uh, when power goes out, uh, we need our health department functioning. And, and they so, have vaccines that must have refrigeration. Exactly, and so among other uh, things, as we as we look at uh, that building improvement, there is an additional cost of fifty five thousand dollars, and that's going to be coming from uh, from fund balance and fund forty six, which is their capital fund. Uh, see. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, seniors, uh, we have uh, increased revenue uh, through a new uh, program and, and through higher enrollment. Revenue is increasing by 75000 with uh, miscellaneous services and expenses increasing by 235000 uh, Under our... Excuse me. Did yeah. you say two hundred seventy-five thousand in revenue and expenditures? Uh, two hundred seventy-five in revenues, two hundred thirty-five in expenditures. Thank you. Um, under uh, the health department, we've also received new contract funding to combat tobacco, e-cigarette, and substance and nicotine uh, uh, abuse. Uh, that's contract twenty twenty-four uh, fifty-eight. That was approved by the commission. That's an additional. $135,000 in uh, revenues. The offsetting expenses for that are $25,000 in payroll, $10,000 in benefits, and then $10,000 in prevention grants. $100,000. Uh, or excuse me, $100,000 in prevention grants. Under our library, uh, we have uh, we have some adjustments. We have a decrease in revenues and a decrease in expense. Uh, generally, we don't do this. Uh, well, I shouldn't say we don't do this. This is, has been requested uh, as our uh, library is looking at um, wrapping up this year. They want to true up budgets. And so uh, the endowment foundation, they uh, are anticipating $35,000 less and in fines and for forfeitures, $35,000 less than what they budgeted. And so they are just showing you here where they are going to uh, reduce expenditures so that their budget still balances come December 31st. And so $8,000 from sundry revenue, $35,000 from books and materials. Excuse me, that 8,000 in sundry revenues 
was revenues, not expense. They're going to balance it with $35,000 from books and material expenditure and then $43,000 from uh, miscellaneous services. Uh, under our debt service, um, Uh, under library, um, okay, sorry, I'm just remembering everything that I'm supposed to offer this sheet. Uh, this is coming, this is uh, additional revenue coming in from Fund 42, which is your library capital. Last year, uh, we closed on our bonds for the Clearfield Library uh, really on the last day of December, and so we did not budget for debt service payment. We knew that we would have a debt service payment, but uh, those were the 2019C bonds and they closed, I want to say, on December 20th after the budget had been approved. And so we were just opening the budget. We knew that we would have this expenditure, but this $393,023 is a transfer from that so that we can pay debt service on the Clearfield Library. On Fund 45, uh, you see the offset for $5.2 million coming in from Fund 10. Uh, once again, Fund 45 is our uh, capital uh, improvement fund for the general operations of the county. Fund 46, uh, Health Department, you have revenue increasing uh, for their capital uh, improvement fund by $10,000. Uh, this is recognizing Clearfield CDBG program contributions to the Senior Center Door Project where they're located in uh, Clearfield. Uh, uh, they were able to utilize CDBG funds there as they serve the population in, in Clearfield, the offsetting building and grounds maintenance fee or expense of $10,000 is also recognized. And then Fund 48, uh, which is our, uh, our debt service fund uh, for the uh, 2019C uh, Clearfield Library bonds, uh, you can see the expense increasing by that $393,000. And twenty-three dollars. Other than that, we really don't have a lot going on in the county right now. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. No questions. I move that we open the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. This is the opportunity. If there is anyone who has come to speak to this um, resolution, we would be very happy to hear from you. Okay, seeing none. If not, I'll make a, a motion that we close the public hearing at this time and we approve the uh, adoption of the additional 2020 public budget appropriations. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing and to adopt the additional 2020 budget appropriation requests. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. That was indeed a lot and represents a lot of work from a lot of people. Thank you to everyone. Now we will move forward with the other business and action items. So let's see. We do have the notice of the rescheduled hearing. Wait. Yes? Were you saying something, Janet? The public Thank hearing. You. The public hearing. It there was just a notice that it was rescheduled from last week. Or today. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, because of the windstorm, this was noticed uh, before the, that the hearing would be rescheduled to today. Thank you. So now, item number one is to ratify an agreement with Westlaw. This comes from the civil attorney's office, where Neil is. And this is for Westlaw subscription for online services for legal research. This is replacing 2018-635. The terms begin September 1st, 2020, ending August 31st of 2023. This is a payable. And the amount is $2,110.20 per month. It increases to $2,321.22 per month for 2021, and then 2% each year after that. Number two, 
is from the Health Community Services. This agreement is with the University of Utah on behalf of its Utah Poison Control Center. And the Davis County Health Department will provide a variety of services in connection with educational outreach efforts for poison control. The terms begin September 1st, 2020, ending August 1st of 2021. The receivable totals $2,500. Number three comes from the Sheriff's Office. And this is This is, I don't know what to call it, it is an other sort of, let's see. It's a report. It's a report, thank you. It is a report provided to the Utah Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice, with, which is the Utah CCJJ. It is the fiscal year 2020 annual report for beer tax funds. And a little more information, which is interesting about it. Let's see, $18,000 will go toward evidence-based alcohol-related prevention programs. $37,000 will go toward treatment of offenders with alcohol-related programs. $57,000 will go toward alcohol-related law enforcement. $22,000 will go toward the prosecution of alcohol-related cases. And $66,538.56 will go to confinement of alcohol law offenders, which gives us a total of $200,538.56 as a receivable and the terms begin July 1st of 2019 and end June 30th of 2020. Number four is an agreement, again, from the Sheriff's Office with the State of Utah. And this is an agreement with the State of Utah Division of Fleet Operations. This um, provides electronic fuel dispensing and fleet card processing services to the Davis County Sheriff's Office. So it's a user agreement, and the payment is based on the amount of fuel usage. Terms begin September 15th of 2020. There is not an ending date, and so the payable on the paperwork says $1, but again, it's based on usage. So thanks to our Sheriff's Office for all of that. And moving to number five. This is also actually from the Sheriff's Office, an agreement with the Hogan and Associates Construction. So this is the contract, let's see, Construction Manager General Contractor, CMGC agreement. This is exciting. This is maybe one of the reasons you're here, Sheriff. Yes, um, I know you love all of our meetings, but this is a very, very big deal for the county and particularly for the sheriff. So it's the agreement for construction for the new Davis County Jail Medical Observation Unit. There are exhibits and attachments which are included in the paperwork. The cost of the project has a fixed limit cost of $8,200,000. Pre-construction costs are $9,500. Construction management fee for work performed during construction phase is $160,000, and the formula for that was $8,200,000 times 1.95%, which comes to the $160,000 for work performed during construction phase. Construction supervision costs will equal up to 180000 or um, in parenthesis, up to $15,000 a month, up to 12 months. So uh, the CMGC shall be compensated for general conditions up to 
$217,207. So this represents a lot of work and a lot of excitement for our county to have this moving forward. The terms begin October 1st of 2020, ending September 30th of 2021, and the payable totals $8,200,000. So congratulations, Sheriff and, and Davis County. Very excited about this. <clears throat> Number six is um, a wonderful donation from the community to the Sheriff's Office. This um, donation is from the, the contracted entity named Waffled, and the agreement represents a donation of food valued at $300 to employees of the Davis County Sheriff's Office. And I know that they certainly appreciate the county support. Terms begin September 3rd of 2020, ending September 3rd of 2020. Happened on the one day, and the receivable, again, amounts to $300 of a donation. Thank you to Waffled. Number seven. This comes from Animal Control. This is an agreement with Dr. Ali Martin, for, um, who will be a standard service provider contract for temporary vet services. The terms begin September 8th of 2020, ending March 8th of 2021, and the payable is $65 per hour. Number eight. This comes from information systems in our county. The agreement is with Watch Guard Video, and it actually involves a setup for um, cellular upload of in-car and body cam video. The terms begin September 8th of 2020, ending October 30th of 2020. The payable totals $5,000. Commissioner, that was also for ratification. Oh, thank you. So this is to be ratified Correct. in this meeting. Very good. Number nine. This is an agreement with Wasatch Front Regional Council. The acronym is WFRC. Many of us are very familiar with their work. So from the Community and Economic Development Department, <coughs> The description is a standard provider service contract with Wasatch Front Regional Council. And they are helping Davis County rate and rank the third quarter tax proposal projects. And this is what they do. They are a, an MPO, municipal planning organization. Let's see, municipal, MPO, <laughs> too many acronyms. Anyway, their work is super helpful to us. The terms begin September 8th of 2020, ending December 31st of 2020. The payable totals $10,000. <clears> I am gonna get a little drink of water at this point. <laughs> Number 10. This is from, also, Community and Economic Development. This is a resolution, and the resolution is to approve the agriculture protection area for the 1,132 acres that are in Hooper. And this is Hooper, I should say. This is the same item that we approved two weeks ago, but then the CED department decided it needs to be approved by resolution. So this one is a resolution. No terms and no financial information applies. Number 11, from, also from Community and Economic Development. Uh, this is a memo of understanding with GOED, the Governor's Office for Economic Development. And this memorandum of understanding is for the 2020 Utah CARES Cooperative Marketing Fund with the Utah Office of Tourism. So the total tourism grant awarded to Davis County Tourism and Events is $87,500. We actually had a call from the media regarding this to 
and Jessica did a great job explaining it. So we are very excited. This will this grant allows Davis County to or helps Davis County to promote our county as Northern Utah's ultimate playground for all visitors with a variety of, of play activities to choose from in the county. Our campaign will look to promote all aspects of what our county as a destination can offer, including but not limited to skiing, outdoor recreation, amusement centers, arts, shopping, and dining. And our tourism will advertise to the surrounding drive markets and parts of Utah. The media mix will include digital marketing, online publishers, and social media. The terms begin September 8th of 2020, ending December 31st of 2022. The grant receivable is $87,500. And thanks to tourism and the state for good work. Number 12. This is very cool as well. An agreement with USA Wrestling. So it comes from our Legacy Event Center. And listen to this. This wrestling tournament called the Bigfoot Battle was previously held in Washington State. So landing this tournament further cements Davis County and the Legacy Events Center as a top youth sports destination. Interesting use of the word cements. Term, thank you, Janet. Terms begin November 4th, 2020, ending November 7th of 2020. The receivable totals $4,305.40. If Curtis would have been here, he would have laughed a lot more than my fellow commissioners. All right, number 13. Also from the Legacy Event Center. This agreement is with Meta Sports Soccer for the Utah Youth Soccer Games. Terms begin September 8th of 2020, ending October 28th of 2020. The receivable total is $6,035.80. Number 14. From facilities, this agreement is with Cold Tech Refrigeration Incorporated. This is for the walk-in freezer refrigeration equipment replacement. There are not any terms and the payable totals $9,300 and 64 cents. All right, last item is number 15. This comes from Community and Economic Development Department. The agreement is with Davis County Health Department Senior Services this is a sub-recipient agreement for Community Development Block Grant, also known as CDBG, program funding with Davis County Health Department Senior Services Division. It is for the North Davis Senior Center ADA Access Improvement Project for the program year 2020 through 2021. Terms begin July 1st of 2020 Ending June 30th of 2021, the payable totals $25,000. And there was a match, a local match, from Clearfield CDBG of $10,000. That concludes all the business and action items. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, all the action items as been presented items 1 through 15. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second for items 1 through 15. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move the recess to the Board of Equalization. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We have an exciting... <laughs> you got a nice taste for all the work that accumulates if there's two weeks between commission meetings <laughs> because of a windstorm. Thank you for being here with us, Salika. So, commissioners, we are excited. Normally, I just stand up and read numbers during this uh, portion of, of the meeting, but we are excited to announce uh, that we have a new tax administration manager who works closely with you through the Board of Equalization. Uh, Salika Merrill is joining our team and we are just happy as can be. She comes to us from Carbon County. Uh, she was a Chief Deputy Assessor uh, 
for uh, Carbon County, and so she certainly understands that side of, of what uh, will be going on in the county uh, with assessing, and certainly the Board of Equalization deals with a lot of that. Um, she's phenomenal. Uh, when we interviewed her, uh, what helped her stand out was her ability to move things and build and move things forward, and that's what we expect uh, from her. Uh, she'll work uh, side by side with with Heidi Vordecker, who's my chief deputy. Um, Diane Law, with her departure, left a very good organization, a solid foundation, um, and now uh, Salika has the opportunity to build upon that, and we're really excited to have her here and uh, and watch her move forward and and, and take off. Uh, we will do our best to keep up with her. So uh, we're we're excited to have Salika. Welcome, Salika. Yes, we are very excited to have you. She's already been with us in Board of Equalization meetings and is um, very astute, quick learner. Absolutely. Uh, so today, under your uh, property tax register, commissioners, you have for your consideration under auditor adjustments, uh, you have a report with various uh, recommended approved appeals uh, totaling $1,426,000. $24,291. Uh, you have a report uh, with re uh, recommending no change in value for various parcels. Under abatements, uh, you have a late uh, abatement application request with various uh, applications totaling $16,440.94. You have uh, five 2019 veteran uh, tax exemption abatements for your consideration. Under the treasurer adjustments, you have a small balance write-off uh, report uh, of zero dollars. You can see the report from August 1st through August 31st attached. And then under assessor adjustments, uh, under corrections, you have assessor initiated corrections uh, with various parcels totaling $210,712. Thank you for that. I'll move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion that we go out of our board of equalization and back into our regular uh, meeting. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion that we approve the check registers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion that we hold the hearings for applicants one through seven on the agenda abatement. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move approval of the work minutes, work session meeting minutes of August 18th, 2020, and commission meeting minutes August 18th, 2020, and August 25th, 2020. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Is there any additional comment from any of the people still in the room? I think we've shared a lot of information today, a lot of really good information and a lot of good work. We're thankful for it. And with that, we'll consider our meeting adjourned. Thanks.